My name is Mr. A from Another Watch Time, and today we will be taking a close look at one of the hidden gems from Grand Seiko, the SPGX337. Let's get started. The SVGX337 was released last year in June 2019. This is a JDM model, meaning it's a Japan only release, and there's no info for this model on the US site. Since 2018, I've been searching for my first Grand Seiko, and there were many great models out there to select from in the Grand Seiko family. Having to make a choice from so many different options to begin with, you know, starting with the ever popular Snowflake to the luscious Oso Green Peacocks and even getting nitty gritty with the movements, ranging from the likes of Spring Drive to High Beat, I was really hyped to get my first Grand Seiko. Now considering that this was going to be my first Grand Seiko purchase, I wanted something out of the norm. That's not to say that I do not like the models such as the Snowflakes, I know that down the line I probably will end up with another Grand Seiko and that purchase will likely be one of the more mainstream models. But for my first, I wanted something a little unique. So come summer 2019, I visited the Japanese Grand Seiko site and came across this model. Now when I landed my eyes on this, I knew immediately that this was going to be my first Grand Seiko. While browsing, I saw that the model was a quartz, but I was already very well aware of the legendary 9F movements, so it was an added incentive for me. I purchased the watch online and got it about a week later. Since then, this has been in my possession. The SPGX337 has a diameter of 43.6mm with a thickness of 13mm. It comes in this sunburst blue dial with yellow accents which gives it a nice pop. It has a 22mm lug width and has the Grand Seiko's version of the diverse bracelet. The crystal is sapphire with non-reflective coating the Lumi bright hands and indexes. The watch has a presence with its looks and also with its weight as well. It's listed as over 200 grams or 7 ounces to my American peeps and yes, you definitely feel it when it's on the wrist. The watch is stainless steel all around which includes the bezel as well. Now the bezel has a ceramic look to it but it is actually finished with a hard coating which hence gives the ceramic appearance to it. This has the Zaratsu polishing which is the famous hand polishing that Grand Seiko is very well known for. The watch is extremely comfortable and wears smaller than its listed size due to the nature of its design. On my 6.5 inch wrist, the SPGX337 sits comfortably and I really enjoy the direct extension mechanism of this model. And as for the loom shot, well... The things that I like about this model are, first, it's that the SPGX337 presents excellent value proposition. The model is listed at 462,000 yen, which is equivalent to about $4,400. But many retailers do offer this model starting from the 3500 mark for brand new. Now $3,500 is definitely not a low price point. And when you consider the wide variety of options that are available you know, for this price point, you will be wondering if the SPGX337 stands a chance against the competition. However, the finishing, the quality, as well as the rarity of this model creates an interesting spectrum within this price range and I can strongly recommend it as an excellent variation option. The second thing is that this is an HAQ and not just your regular Mills quartz movement out on the street. 
I understand that many people are going to be desiring for a mechanical movement when they paid this much money for a watch, but once you understand the difference of a Grand Seiko 9F movement, you'll realize that this is actually very, very special. With guaranteed accuracy of plus or minus 10 seconds per year, with an approximated life of three years, this becomes extremely dependable and brings new meaning to easy wear, since you do not have to wind, shake, or even change your time when you swap it out for another watch. The things that I wish for improvements when it comes to Grand Seiko SPGX337 is, yes, the weight. Yup, the watch is heavy and sturdy, which makes it a solid wear on your wrist, but the weight distribution leaves something to desire for. The SPGX337 is extremely top heavy, and if you wear this on anything else besides the OEM bracelet, you're definitely going to notice the watch slide around on your wrist. As for the second point, I wish that the edges of the bracelet, um, specifically the diver extension area, would have had a better finishing. I love how the diver extension functions, and it is an extremely smart movement where you can adjust the length of the bracelet using the clasp lock, and this can be done while you're wearing the watch as well. However, once the bracelet is extended, the corners of the bracelet is extremely exposed and they are very sharp. Now fortunately, they do not dig into my skin, but when I'm wearing long sleeve clothing such as a long sleeve shirt or a jacket, I notice that they tend to get caught on my clothing and there's definitely tug and pull. So having owned this watch for well over a year now, I can confidently tell you that the SPGX337 is an underrated model that needs to break free from its regional lockdown, you know, for better mass recognition. It's a shame that this is the JDM model because having owned this, for, uh, this one for some time, I'm confident that the SVGX337 will be very popular here and elsewhere as well, you know, thanks to its design, its ruggedness, as well as simplicity. The watch has two additional variations, the SVGX335 which comes in a black dial, and the SVGX339 which is a limited edition production with a total number of 800 known in existence. This particular model comes with a distinctive black and yellow trim, and it looks gorgeous. Um, it also comes with a Grand Seiko rubber strap as well. Well, that's all I have for today. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the review, and I'll see you guys shortly. Later. Take one, action. Final closing, review two. Closing ceremonies, let's do this, and... Final, final, final take. Let's do this and...